So would either of you guys ever consider being a sperm donor? Um, <laughs> seriously? No. No way. My, uh, my girlfriend would kill me. Um, yeah, I mean, if somebody wants my sperm, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I gotta know what it entails. Would it surprise you to find out that tens of thousands of people out there are actually relying on sperm donors to start their families? People with dreams of being moms and dads who have really no other good option but, but going to a sperm bank and the fact that there are guys out there like yourself, possibly, willing to be sperm donors, have this incredible impact that you really change the world. Is that, would that influence you at all in your decision? Yeah, I mean, when you put it that way, for sure. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I kind of like the idea that, you know, it's, it's for a better cause. If it's, you know, actually to help people, then, then that, that has uh, some light to it. I'm Nathan, I'm 13, and I live in Denver, Colorado. I don't really think that when I learned that I was conceived with donor sperm that it really made a big difference to me because at that age I really didn't know anything different from that. How difficult was that conversation, Julia, to have with your daughter? Oh, the hardest thing in my life to do. What, what was going through your mind as you were... Um, that she would hate me, she'd be very angry. That was probably my biggest part, that she wouldn't want to be with me anymore. Nathan came in and I was watching TV and he said, does the number 5114 mean anything to you? And I said, well, yes, that's your donor. Had you thought about telling her earlier? Because I know some people tell kids all throughout their childhood so that there isn't that. I had thought about it and the timing just wasn't right and I set then a goal that Mother's Day was the day I was going to tell her no matter what. And I saw a reaction. I was, I remember being happy that I had half siblings but a little frustrated with her because she had known about some of them and she hadn't told me before. children earlier that they're not going to resent you as much like if I still had known now that would have definitely I would have been mad if I hadn't if I had went this long in life and not knowing right that definitely I would would have been more mad than I was so even finding out at 12 though there was a level of I wish I'd known earlier yeah like I had grown up thinking this other guy was my dad and he wasn't Tomorrow we are getting on a plane and we are flying to Taos and he is going to meet five of his half-siblings for a, a reunion. I believe just two of the girls have met and the first time that everyone else has met. And some of your friends noticed the resemblance and would say, you guys almost look like you could be related? Yeah, I think um, over, over the summer I posted a status about my Colombian sperm donor and she messaged me and said, um, I don't want to be creepy, but I also have a Colombian sperm donor. Wouldn't it be funny if we were sisters? When she posted that status, I was like, that's too much coincidence. And so I messaged her and my family and I like went through all her pictures and we're like, do we look enough alike? Yeah. Like, could we actually be related? And then one of your moms said, why don't you check the donor number? Yes. Just describe, Emily, for me the moment when you realized the number was the same. I panicked. I thought she was kidding. I, I freaked out. I, I texted her. I was like, Are you, you're you're joking with me. You're absolutely joking with me. And she told me she wasn't. And I started running around the house screaming and telling everybody, calling people. And you? I was sitting in the dermatologist's office, and it was really quiet, and I wanted so bad to scream. <laughs> um, but it was, I just, I, I, it was mind-blowing. I didn't know what to do. My name is Nick. My name is Alexis. My name is Danny. My name's Naylin. Zeke. I've noticed that we all have full lips. 
Yeah, and dark and eyebrows. bushy eyebrows. Yeah. Some of That's us have, like, is. kind of widest noses, like we do, and he does, kind of. Mm -hmm. And we all play soccer. Yeah. So many questions from clients about our, our openness policy, our contact policy with donors. Let's talk about anonymous donors first. What does it mean when I choose an anonymous donor and what does that mean in terms of potential contact for my child someday with that donor? The policy is that they do not agree to have any type of contact with offsprings up front. However, if an 18-year-old comes to us and is interested in having some type of contact with an anonymous donor, we will attempt to get in contact with the donor to find out his feelings at that point. It starts all with email. I will have an offspring send me a bio, a list of questions that they're interested in, and I basically cut and paste and send it to the uh, donor, and then the donor sends it back to me, I cut and paste and forward it to the offspring. And then if the donor says, okay, I'm comfortable with photos, I just follow the same procedure. Yes, it does. I have worked with a number of offsprings who have met their donors and they're doing just they're doing just great. David Wozniak, you are the biological father of 533 children. What? These children are the result of a mix-up at the fertility clinic to which you donated in 1991. They are now suing to discover your identity. What? to use a donor because you have choices and it's safe. <laughs> it was the best decision I ever made. I'm having a blast.